What does Les Brown do when he's when he's faced with all the uh, symptoms that he has possibly failed in this situation? Well, one of the things that I have learned how to do is to detach myself, not to buy into it, that it's a part of it, that disappointments, setbacks, I have learned truly not to judge according to appearances. I see them as little projects to be worked out. Mm -hmm. That's challenging my wits, seeing, hey, how much do you really want it? How creative are you? How resourceful are you? How unstoppable are you? How determined are you? How bad do you want it? How hungry are you? I see life waltzing with me, saying, you want a tango? Come on. You want this? You willing to run over here? Come on. Are you willing to climb this mountain here? Come on. Are you willing to hold your breath and try and swim down to this level? Come on. I see it as a challenge that introduces me to myself. And so we all have to look at life like that. It's a little game, I think. Les, what about something that uh, I think we've all seen in our life and had to deal with uh, either personally or with a relative? Uh, what about disease? What about sickness uh, that attacks a home? Incurable diseases. You know, they, 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 they give you the word. Hey, you've got six months. You've got three months. You've got a year, whatever. But, but this, this is not going to go away, what you have. Yes. I'm saying they can give you the word. Now, you've got a choice to accept the word or reject the word. See, there are diseases that people say are incurable, and they say they're incurable because records show or statistics indicate there's only 95 percent, uh, rather there is a 95 percent of the people that get this disease die. Mm -hmm. And I say that if 5 percent live, then the disease is not incurable because mm -hmm. five people walked away. Now, we need to look at those five and find out what was going on there. Yeah. What happened? And I think that those five said, hey, I'm not ready to go. I've got some more living to do. I've got something else to do. And that they harness their feelings. They harness that healing energy that is within themselves, knowingly or unknowingly, that caused them to extend their lives. So what we've got to begin to do is only embrace those things that's for our highest good that no one has the right to determine or has the knowledge to say how long we're going to be here and that we can choose to surrender or we can choose to take a stand and fight. And there are a lot of people who fight who are still here. There are people who fight and who go. Mm -hmm. But at least they go out fighting. They didn't just surrender. They didn't just throw in the towel on themselves. And I'm saying that, that there is something in us there's a power and an energy that's in us that we owe it to ourselves to take on anything, dis-ease in the body, poverty, opposition, whatever is between that and which we desire and, and we feel that will give us a full and rich life, we should fight for it. And you've just got to decide that my life is worth this kind of effort and Fight with everything in you night and day with every breath that you have. Most people don't have that kind of fighting spirit. Most people expend more energy watching a, a, a football game or a basketball game or some type of sporting event that they will give to their dream. They spend more time talking about what happened on television in some soap opera or some spectacular entertainment event stress-relieving activity than focusing on the possibilities for their own lives. They don't get that excited about themselves and their own potential for greatness. And I'm saying that we need to begin to start focusing in on ourselves and using our energies to move us from where we are in the direction of where we want to go. Overcoming the automatic mind. The automatic mind. Yes. That's a good The phrase. things that, that our, our, our experiences, our past results have told us. Mm -hmm. Our current reality beginning to know that this is not it, that we are always involved in either creating reality or buying into the reality that we see. So if we begin to learn how not to judge according to appearances 
as we begin to, with everything in us, tenaciously to pull down the strongholds on our minds and do maintenance work to make sure that those negative thoughts and that automatic mind doesn't creep in on us again, so we're worrying about or beginning to only focus on and see the obstacles and the limitations as opposed to the solutions or the possibilities. As we work on ourselves constantly, what we will find is that we become at one or in alignment with the universe, and we are able to produce what appear to be miracles to most people, but it's only a perfect outworking of the law when we are working in harmony with the universe. And so the, the key to it is, is, is beginning to, to continue to have a whole a vision of what you want to create, of constantly working with your feelings and your energy, keeping it positive, and engaging in actions and having things where the pictures, scriptures, music, friends, relationships, goals that challenge you and feed into you and create this new reality for yourself. Because as you continue to hold that in focus, as you can continue to charge that with words and sell yourself on your having it, acting as if it already is, when you finally get that feeling, hit that level of consciousness, it will manifest. People come out of nowhere and support you. You get unexpected money that you had no idea that was going to come your way. Help and assistance from strangers comes to you and you say, whoa. You begin to discover things showing up that you need that you didn't even know you needed them. And here they are right here at your disposal when you get to that new level of consciousness. The key is the people that I have read, the Thomas Edison's, the John H. Johnson's, the Dr. Norman Vincent Peale's, the great inventors, the George Washington Carver's, the Dr. Benjamin Mazes, these people had dogged determination. They knew it. They saw it. They felt it. They experienced it. It was a, a consciousness about them. And I think one of the greatest manifestations of that in our, in our time, I would say Nelson Mandela. That why is it that so many people who took the stand he took died and he didn't? How is it? What is it that will give a man or a woman that kind of determination to give up 26 years of their lives, facing death every day, that they not wimp out or not fall or collapse? Mm not surrender. What is it about a human being? I'm saying that the human spirit is, is so enormously powerful beyond our wildest imagination that one, one entity could bring a government to its knees or begin to dismantle an unjust form of government. What is it? What is it about a human being, about a Mother Teresa, about a Mahatma Gandhi, about a, a Benjamin Disraeli, about a Winston Churchill about a Martin Luther King, what is it about those people that can affect humanity in the way that they have and in a historical context will never be the same again? And I say that whatever it is in them, we are all endowed with that and have the capacity to produce those kind of results in our lives. Don't you think all those people saw what they were involved in or who they were bigger than any possible circumstance that could confront them? Yes. And we all have the ability to align ourselves with something that, that will outlast us, something that is bigger than ourselves, mm -hmm. and energize and propel us to new levels of consciousness. So the highest state of consciousness would be to know that there is nothing that can stop you. That's right. And to know that whatever happens to us, we are better than that. That not to judge ourselves based upon the results that we're producing right now and based upon our circumstances. That the, Our circumstances do not determine us. Even the results, they're only a reflection of what we've become. That's mm -hmm. all. And we can always have more and do more because we can always become more. Mm -hmm. So once again, going back to the drawing board, working on ourselves, not even looking at the problem, not even focusing on the circumstances, but just working within, knowing that as I go within, as I read, as I meditate, as I begin to contemplate and become at one with this force that is within me, that this too shall pass away. It has not come to stay. Thank God it doesn't come to stay. <laughs> That's right. The man said, you know, um, thank God trouble don't last always. But he said, but it lasts long enough. It lasts long enough. <laughs> Plenty long enough. 
as you, I've heard you say many times, you don't believe these things work. You know they work, don't you? Oh, yes. I, that's the only you way that I've it. been able to do it. Yes. And, and it reminds me I must prove it every day. Mm. But if you can begin not to focus on and accept your current reality as what's it for you. Mm -hmm. Beginning to know that you are involved in creating reality. And that breakthrough, the level of energy, the kind of thinking, the kind of person you must be in order to produce those results, that you're getting out of step with the common thinking of all mankind. That you, you, you're marching to the beat of a different drama. And, and that can be lonely and that can feel awkward and strange and weird. And it's okay. But if you've burned uh, all your bridges... <laughs> it puts you in a position where you have got to do it. And that's pretty good, isn't it? That's right. Because that's you will do be. it. You will... Yes. And the kind of person you become will give you such a feeling of self-appreciation and self-respect. You'll be glad that life did not deny you the opportunity of experiencing what you had to experience in order to, to enjoy that because you know you got it the old-fashioned way. That's a little scary to you cut all your roots it. of retreat. You yes, know? <laughs> absolutely. But that's how you know yourself. So could, would you say that until a person does that, they really don't believe in what they're doing? And life doesn't have any meaning for you. Mm. It's empty. It's hollow. Mm. It doesn't have any music. There's no sense of adventure. No, it's dull. It's drab. It's nothing to roll out of bed about in the morning with a a smile on your face and fire in your belly. Uh -huh. No, it's not that kind of party. You can take it or leave it. Mm. You need an alarm clock to wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Les, this time, I'm sure this is touching the heart cord of a lot of people. Oh, yeah. That are living in boredom today. Yes. They're living, they just go through one day, the next day. Their families are bored. The marriage is boring. They're, they're, they have nothing to look forward to living tomorrow in fear, that didn't happen today. Resisting change, mm -hmm. complaining, complaining, complaining. That what can they do to start finding what's going to give their life zest? Let's give them this. Make it simple. All right. Get to know yourself. And know that regardless of what's going on now, Mm -hmm. You're a lovable, you're valuable, you're a worthwhile person. You've been endowed with greatness. You have basic goodness, which is the foundation for the greatness that you can ultimately achieve. And you have a, a spiritual and moral obligation to do something with your life. You have a reason for being here. Thank you, Les. Thank you.